Good afternoon. Welcome to Casa de Cassidy. This is Mrs. Cassidy giving you an introduction to measurement. Um, this book, How Tall, How Short, and How Far Away, is a book by David A. Adler. He's a pretty famous um, author of math books, and it's illustrated by Nancy Tobin. He is basically giving you the history on measurement. So here we go. How tall, how short, how far away. There's our title page. This tells us that this book was born in 1999, so it's about 21 years old. And here we go. How tall are you? How long is your block? How far away is your school? The only way to answer these questions is by measuring. People have been measuring things for thousands of years. In ancient Egypt, fingers, hands, and arms were used as the measuring tools. The width of one finger was a digit from the left to the right, one digit. The width of four fingers was a palm. Then, if you opened your hand and stretched your fingers, the distance from your thumb to your pinky was called a span. And then if you bent your arm, the distance from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger was called a cubit. So you had digits, palms, spans, and cubits. Now, Let's say you were gonna try figuring out your height using the units of measurement from ancient Egypt. You would stand straight with your back against a wall, maybe take your shoes off, put your heels against the wall, and you would have an adult mark your height with a very light pencil mark. Okay, ask your parents before you do this. Then you would need to find out how many cubits tall you were. Now remember, the cubit is from your elbow all the way to your middle finger. So you could lie down on the floor, place your elbow on the floor next to the wall, bend it, and then reach up. And then you would find out what your cubit was. You would make a light pencil mark where the tip of your middle finger touched the wall, and that would be one cubit. And then you would stand up and put your elbow on this line and measure up to that middle finger again, and that would be your second cubit. And you would keep measuring like that until you got your answer, okay? Now, your height may not be an exact number of cubits, and if it isn't, you have to use the other measures of ancient Egypt too. So from the cubit mark just beneath your height mark, you would, so you would go one, two, three. You would start measuring using span, palm, or digit. All right? So this girl is saying that according to her body, she is three cubits tall, one span, two palms, and two digits. Okay, so she measured herself using what they used to use in Egypt. Well, then if you were to ask a friend, or let's say you asked your sister, and you said, hey, let, why don't you measure me using your cubit spans, palms, and digits? Now, if her arm is shorter than yours, her measurement is going to be different, right? So look at this example. This is what the girl came up with. Three cubits, one span, four palms, two digits. But then the girl that she also had measure her, this girl, she came up with four cubits and two digits. So who's right? Huh. Then try measuring the length of your block 
the street that you live on, you could take a friend and an adult to one end of your block and have them stand on the corner. And then you would count your steps all the way to the end of the block. All right? You would count your steps as you walk to the other end. Well, every two steps is called a pace, which was the measure used in ancient Rome. Rome is in Italy. You, your friend, and your adult walking with you may each get different answers because the adult is going to take bigger steps and your friend, who might be smaller than you, would take smaller steps. You're all going to get different answers because the length of your steps are all different, right? So they had, to, they had a problem with the measurement and they had to come up with a solution. Now, think about measuring a greater distance, perhaps the distance from your house to your school. You would measure that in miles in ancient Rome one mile was measured by counting 1,000 paces. So this lady said, the Colosseum is exactly one mile and 44 paces down the road. And then this lady, who's shorter, says, no, I'm sure it's one mile and 83 paces down the road. But then look at this guy. Actually, the Colosseum is just one mile away. So who's right? So, if everyone used their own arm to measure, we wouldn't know the exact size of anything. If everyone used their own steps to measure paces and miles, we wouldn't know the exact distance to any place. In the past, people often used one man's cubit or steps as a standard, and that man was usually the king. All right? So, the people's leader or king, they would go by how big that king's cubit or span or digit or walking pace was. But then what happens when the king changes? What if that king passes away and a new king comes? Well, of course, you also couldn't have the king travel from house to house to measure things for you. So standard measuring sticks were made. That's called a ruler. Now, in different times and parts of the world, there may have been many systems of measurement, but today there's only two systems that are used. The customary or inch and pound system, that is used in the United States. Okay, so here's the United States, which includes Alaska and Hawaii. We use customary. Everywhere else in the world uses something else called the metric system. All right, kind of crazy, but the United States uses one thing of measurement and everywhere else uses the metric system. All right, well, for customary, it's based on Roman measures. One inch is about the width of somebody's thumb. So that was one inch. And then if they did 12 of the inches, that came up to one foot. And then if you had three feet, that would equal one yard. So instead of cubits and palms and spans, they changed it to inches, feet, and yards. And then listen to this, 5,280 feet or 1,760 yards, that equals one mile. Crazy, huh? Now, this is a page about the metric system. I do not want to confuse you right now, so I'm not gonna read this page. You will have to look into this at a later time about the metric system. But in this book, they said, go to somewhere like your refrigerator. Which units of measure would you use in the customary system to measure the length of a celery stick from one end all the way to the other end? So they want to know what kind of unit would you use? Then they said, what unit would you use to measure the length of your kitchen? From over here all the way to over here in your kitchen. 
what would you use? And then they go any they go further and they say, which units would you use to measure the distance from your house all the way to the library? Right? You would use different types of measurement because they're longer longer distances away. All right, so the answers were, you would use small units to measure the celery sticks. That would be inches and centimeters. You would use larger units to measure the kitchen, feet, yards, or meters. And you would use even larger units to measure the distance to the library. And in the United States, we use miles. All right, so customary and metric systems are two different ways that people in the world measure things. All right, I'm gonna stop there because in your activities this week, you're going to be measuring things using paper clips, all right? So they use two different sizes of paper clips. We have the big size and the little size. And um, basically, you are going to be measuring things using those two different sizes. So you're not gonna use a customary ruler, you're going to measure using paper clips first. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the history of measurement and how it's important to be using the same things to measure with, otherwise you'll get all different answers. All right, I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you soon.